So there are several important characteristics about ADC. Um, sampling rate is the most important one. Uh, it's about the speed of the conversion or the samples that the ADC chip can uh, convert per second. The faster the ABC, uh, the, sam the faster the sampling rate, the more expensive the ADC is typically. Nyquist frequency uh, is um, a important concept. Essentially we're saying uh, we need to have double or more than the signal's highest frequency component to properly understand the signal. So in the earlier example, we had a 9K Hertz uh, signal and we need to have at least 18K samples per second in order to properly understand the signal. Basically get the um, analog signal converted to digital format to process that signal. In addition to sample rate, we also concern about the resolution of the ADC. Resolution means the accuracy of each sample. We can have 8-bit, 9-bit, 11-bit, 13-bit, etc. Um, the resolution of the sample will determine uh, what is the granularity of the uh, physical quantity that you can measure. Higher resolution is of course um, good, but it's not always required. Let's look at this, this example. We have a temperature sensor uh, that has a range from zero degree to 100 degree uh, Celsius. And it has an accuracy of plus or minus 0 0.5 degree. That means we only have 200 meaningful uh, values in terms of the degree. That corresponds to 200 meaningful voltage levels. Uh, with such a range and the uh, accuracy of this physical quantity, what will be the required um, bits of the samples? Can anyone tell me? Yeah. So with 80 bits, you can have uh, 256 values. Um, then assign these 256 values to uh, these 200 meaningful voltages, that's possible. You can't do that with seven bits because with seven bits, you only have up to 200, um, up to 128 different values and you need 200 values to represent these voltages. Um, and more than 80 bits uh, will not be helpful for this case. When you have a sample, and, and when you have um, a reference voltage, you can then use this formula to calculate the signal, the original voltage value. Um, let's say the sample is 153 and your max value from this ADC is 255. And then your reference voltage is five volts. And then you can find out that your signal that coming out of the sensor is three volts. In the next couple of slides, we want to uh, look into one um, popular ADC chip, AD670. This is from analog devices. Uh, in this example, it's a 20 pin dip package uh, it's 8-bit uh, ADC, that means every sample is 8-bit. Uh, it has a few um, pins that can be used to interface with microprocessors or microcontrollers. Its uh, conversion speed is uh, 10 microsecond. Its input range can be configured um, in you know, different ways, we'll see that. And one good thing is um, you don't need to have other components uh, to have this ADC to work. Uh, it internally it has amplifiers, um, uh, DAC uh, to uh, generate uh, analog values based on digital code to, to compare. 
and it has comparators. Uh, it uh, has a registers and tri-state output buffer. Some of the main control pins beside the power and ground, uh, we have a control bit R slash W star or W bar. It's the um, signal to start the conversion or read data. And we have chip select, chip enable, and the status bit indicating a conversion is in progress. We have 8-bit data. Uh, the 8-bit data output will be high impedance unless this uh, uh, it's a reading and also chip select and chip enable are uh, active. And the read cycle ends either of those bar too high. Conversion will start when you um, assert a uh, one on the uh, RW um, pin. And when the conversion start, uh, any other start command will be ignored. The conversion cycle cannot be stopped or restarted. One interesting uh, feature about this ADC is you can choose the uh, input format and uh, also output format. Uh, input format here is, uh, you know, we refer to bipolar or unipolar. Bipolar meaning that your input voltage can go, you know, positive and negative. And unipolar means that you only go one direction. Uh, typically, it's uh, uh, go from zero to the positive. So as a result, you have um, four input ranges. And uh, that's, you know, if you choose the higher voltage, uh, that means from zero to 2.55. Uh, uh, that's the unipolar uh, input format. If you choose that, 2.5 volt range, you can choose bipolar, uh, then the actual voltage input will go from negative 1.28 to positive 1.27 volts. The other two are um, different um, input range, which you can select. You can see that this is a, uh, 1,000 know, smaller than the other range. This is the mini, mini, uh, millivolt uh, range. Output format can also be chosen using uh, the, one of the pins. You can choose to use tools complement or uh, offset binary um, you know, based on your needs. Uh, this is the internal design. I will not uh, talk too much about it. And this is a, you know, the summary of uh, different output uh, format you can choose and how these um, voltage inputs will be um, mapped to the uh, output formats. Um, you can choose to use straight binary format uh, by setting these. And uh, if you use, uh, let's say if you choose to use uh, unipolar, which means you set this as a zero, because UPO, unipolar is, uh, unipolar is uh, active uh, low, um, then you will see um, this range here and because this is straight binary so you see this um, value uh, corresponds to the um, digital value just um, as straight binary um, so the adc really measures the difference um, between the two inputs um, so the when you have the difference of the zeros, you correspond to zero. You, when you have 128 millivolts, that's one uh, with seven zeros, and the 255 millivolt, then that gives you eight zeros, sorry, eight ones. Uh, you can choose to use other formats, um, and uh, you'll be able to, um, you know, you can look at this table to refer to different formats. You know, the, the, the um, the reason I present these tables is not for you to really remember anything, um, how to set these, um, because we're not using this particular chip in our labs. But the point is that you, when you are given a ADC chip, you oftentimes will have these decisions to make, 
um, what will be the input range, uh, what will be the granularity is in the volt range or millivolt range, um, and what will be the output format. Um, there's a truth table that you can use when you program this chip to um, uh, perform ADC conversions. This RW is the pin to start the conversion or read the data. Chip select and chip enable. You'll find these control pins everywhere in most of the ICs. Uh, these two uh, pins are used to uh, select the operation mode of this chip. Uh, like in this example, if any of this pin is a active high, is logic one, uh, this chip will basically be disabled. So it will not function. The whatever output um, bus that this chip is connected to will be isolated from this chip. So the operation will be none and the output will be set to the high impedance state. So we'll have no effect on uh, other components. And when you read these data sheets, you will find um, these timing diagrams. Timing diagrams are useful when you um, have different chips, you know, the high speed or lower speed uh, chips, you, you want to have them work together. You need to be very careful uh, to uh, make sure that the signals that you use to drive uh, the other chip will follow the timing um, requirement. Um, let me give you an example here. Um, right, uh, so, so this is R slash W bar. So this is the control signal to start the conversion or read data. When we um, put this zero on this control pin, essentially we're saying we want to start a conversion or we want to do the ADC. And this TDC, this here from uh, this TRWC, read, write, set up before control. So this is, um, well, this TWC is this delay to um, read, write, set up before control. So there is some, some amount of delay when you just put a zero on this, um, on this uh, control pin, it takes some time for the chip to get this control signal. So that's the RWC. And then the chip internally has to prepare to actually start. So there's a delay to convert start. So TDC is the additional time that the uh, conversion is actually start internally. And then this TC is the conversion time. So from here, this point to here, uh, that's the conversion time. And that's typically 10 um, microsecond. Whereas for delay to convert start, uh, that's um, uh, 700 nanosecond. So this part here. Now let's look at TC in particular. So TC, this conversion time, and its max value is 10 microsecond. And there's no typical, no minimal, uh, but the max value, which means that if you want to read the value, um, the digital value uh, as the outcome from this ADC conversion, you better wait for 10 microseconds because it, this conversion time can go as long as 10 microseconds. If your reading of the value, which is this cycle, read cycle here, if your reading of the cycle early is, you know, for some reason it's shorter than 10 microseconds, there is a possibility that you will not read the correct value because the conversion time can go as long as 10 microseconds. Okay. Um, this is just one uh, example from the data sheet. For many of these ICs, you'll find timing diagrams, you'll find these timing specifications. 
So it's important that you understand these parameters. Um, you know, if if you just you know spend a little bit more time reading these different um, segments, different uh, um, definitions of these time periods, you will get a sense. You know how these um, signals work together. But you know when you have multiple chips um, put into the one system, and uh, you will drive them at you know different clocks. Um, you want to be precise on um, when you can safely read the data and um, when you should you know should not. Uh, in this example, because the conversion time can be up to ten microsecond, then you have to wait at least that long to guarantee your reading uh, will get you the correct um, ADC result. Okay, so this diagram shows you an ex example how you can connect this uh, ADC to a microcontroller system. And this is the data bus that you can connect this ADC to. And you can use other um, um, pins or signals from the microprocessor system to drive this chip enable or chip select. And if you are, um, this is the PC or um, um, you know, uh, microprocessor system that you um, may have you know, using uh, Pentium or um, you know, ARM or different processors. You have a lot of these pins for control. But if you have a much simpler uh, microcontroller like uh, the ones used by Arduino, you may not have that many um, address pins, or, sorry, data, data bus uh, or um, control pins. So you can simply you know, connect these um, um, CE or CS, one of them to the ground. So you just need to control the other one using one of the control pins to enable or disable this chip. And you have another control signal to connect to the read and write to um, start a conversion uh, or read data. And of course, this, this is the data output. You need to decide whether you want to connect them directly to, uh, to the microcontroller or you want to connect it to another memory chip uh, if you have to. Um, so there's some flexibilities there. 